watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord for an opportunity once again to be in his presence. Amen. I know God's presence is everywhere, but this is his manifest presence. A time he has set aside to have fellowship with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we'll be looking at a topic that says the deal of Hermon experience. The deal of Hermon experience. Amen. And before we go ahead, let's share a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are once again here in your awesome presence, and we ask about the power of the Holy Spirit that you overtake us today. Minister to your people by the power of your word. Let someone connect to, to today's message. Let the message today make a meaning in someone's life. Let your name alone be glorified, even as your people receive the blessing. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, our topic says, the deal of Herman experience. I wonder what comes to your mind when you hear of the word Herman or the deal of Herman. The deal of Herman is, you know, I see it, you know, sounds very big to me because from the first time I heard of that expression and I went to the Bible and read more about it, it was a very pleasing experience and I know that God wants us to share it together today. That's why he laid it in my heart to share. So let's go ahead quickly to our text today. Our text is uh, Psalm chapter 133. We're going to start reading from verse 1. Psalm 133, verse 1, and it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And verse 2 says, It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the bread, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon. And as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah, someone. Glory to God. That there the God, the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Hmm. Amen. The uh, dew of Herman experience. I want us to look closely at the do of Herman. Why do we want to talk about it? Do is part of, you know, nature, what nature has given us. But why are we talking about the do of Herman as if there's something special about it? Sure, indeed, there's something special about it. According to the findings I made when I was preparing this message, we understand that the do of Herman is not like every day, like what we know as the do that falls. No. There is something phenomenal, there's something special, something peculiar about this particular dew that comes from the Mediterranean area. And from the finding, it says that it comes, it's a soft mist that falls, that comes during summer. Can you imagine that soft mist that comes during summer? And you know, and it comes at a time when the environment is burning. It's kind of the city is burnt with the heat of summer. Think about that. This soft mist that falls that comes during the heat of summer. That's where the uniqueness lies. When the environment is burnt, when this environment seems to be ablaze with heat, that's when this mist. That's when this soft mist comes. Praise God. In that case, there is something about it which is not common. Can you imagine a soft mist coming, arriving in the midst of the heat? 
Think about that. It's almost like, you know, you know, some ice cubes. I hear some place, you know, out there in the northern part of Nigeria that people during the, you know, hot season, they go around with, you know, ice cubes in their hearts. They put it in their heart and put it over their head because that's the only way they can move to the next place without fainting, without passing out. So can you just imagine that? You know, a drop of some, you know, calmness in a heated environment. See, it's a, it's a phenomenal kind of dew, you know, that comes, soft, soft, you know, mist that comes in the heat of the summer sun, you know, weather. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be, you know, looking at it closely. What is it that will be the, the dew of Hermon experience as it pertains to us human beings, it pertains to us people of God. Today, I want us to travel together through the Word of God and see how we come into the matter, how God, what God expects of us, how we can fit in to that experience of the Dew of Hermon. Hallelujah. Amen. The Dew of Hermon, like we have understood from here, comes in a time that is not expected, comes in the midst of chaos, comes in the midst of, you know, heat chaos. The chaos that can be caused by heat, you know, when the environment is hot. We all can imagine when, everyone, at least all over the world, globally, there's always a time when the heat comes, even though the degrees vary. Yeah, so then, just imagine a typical summer heat. You know how it is, how the environment feels. You know, hard and burning and all that. And then there's this soft mist coming, surfacing. You know, appearing, dropping somewhere. You know that portion we read says, "Upon you know Mount Zion, that that it descends, that descends upon Mount Zion." And what is the Bible talking about? It says, "Dwelling in unity, dwelling together." It's how how pleasant, how pleasing to God it is. How good. Remember, whatever the Bible calls good, it's really good. And say so how good and how pleasant it is for people, for brethren to dwell in unity. That it is, and I began to compare that form of unity. Okay, every day we talk, we are very big on teamwork. You hear it everywhere you go. And the classes, they want you to do group work. They want to be sure how you can agree with people at, at, the, at the office. They tell you, oh, you can do, there are some things you can do well if you don't work together with people. No man is an island. We say that every day. But what we are talking about goes beyond that. Because when it comes to the work environment, you know, everyone wants well. I don't want to be the one that will bring problems. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to be tired with the bad person. I just, that's the company policy. That's what they expect us to do. I just need to show that I am, you know, I am, I just need to see surface. You know, we just want to get through it, get by it, let it get done. It's not just a few hours and I'll be out of here and be my real self, you know. We put up a facet, you know, we put, put up a garment of teamwork, you know, because that's, that's what is demanded of us so we can make our box. It's not real. This time, the Word of God expects us to be real. We're talking about being real, you know, being able to let it come from inside of us. Be you know making ourselves available like that mist, like like that soft mist that comes in summer. When you come around, what happens when you come in in a situation? What is the people's experience? What do people experience when you are around? Or what what do you bring? What do you bring to a scene, to a setting, to a scenario? What do you bring? Do you bring more chaos? Do you add gas to the fire? What do you bring? Does your presence bring calmness? Can God trust you to say, oh, this my daughter is getting to that situation. I trust her to do something better. This my son, he said, he said about Abraham, he said, I know him. He's able to. God gave a testimony of Abraham. Can God give a testimony of any of us? When you come into a situation, what happens? I tell us a story about what happened some years ago. Uh, actually, it's a very serious thing. So there was a scuffle somewhere, and then a life was lost, and the family was grieving so badly, and the the deceased, you know, person, the the uncle, wasn't taking it lightly. No one would take it lightly, anyways. And it's in a part of the world where 
certain laws, you know, laws can be treated anyhow. You know, you don't really trust the law enforcement agencies and all that. So the man was bent on like some kind of however he was going to revenge. He just wanted to give it out back to the other family. And the two, the, the family, you know, on the other side, the man who was some kind of involved in the murder needed, you know, was trying to go make appeal to the other man, the uncle to the deceased person. It was a huge loss to the family. I mean, it was, it was not a funny thing. Nobody wants to lose a loved one. So the air was tense, you know. It was really a bad, a bad situation. So, and this man who was involved happens to have a cousin who is good with the words and a peaceful man by his lifestyle. So then he wanted to go, you know, you know, because the, the man who was involved wanted to go appeal to to the other man who lost his nephew. And he thought, oh, yeah, it's all about, I, I have, I'm eloquent, I am whatever he was then. So he thought he had, because he would always disagree with his cousin who was on the common side. But then this cousin knew that if he stepped into the matter, there was going to be a change. Praise God. There are some people that, even by their nature, but we are going to talk about what is beyond nature today. We're going to be talking about the supernatural because there are some things we cannot, you know, get with our natural setting. It has to be the supernatural power of God. But let's give an instance of what can happen, you know, when, when, we, we, are, when, when we kind of become that, you know, soft mist that comes at the same time. So we're going to just look at that situation of loss of life as a heat of the summer, okay? So there was so much heat around, and the man wanted to just go, and his cousin offered to go with him. He said he kind of disrespected him. He didn't want him. He felt he had, he was in control. He had, you know, he had it all put together. So he went ahead and went to the man's house to make an appeal. He, I think he had gone many times over. He just felt, oh, let me make one last more attempt, offer some things. So as it was, they were still talking. The man, the owner of the house was not even ready to listen to him. But then after a while, his cousin like, oh, okay. He walked out on me and went, let me still go. So he went over to the, to the, to the bereaved man's house. So when he got in and greeted them, the owner of the house said, why are you here? He called him by his first name. He said, I'm here because of my cousin. He said, wow, wow, I don't believe this is happening to me. There is no way this man would talk to me and I'll be adamant because of who he is, because of the way he carries on, because of the kind of words that come out of his mouth. I cannot afford to disrespect him. My hands are tied. What are we getting from there? That can, if you come into a situation and you, you carry the soft mist like the dew of Hermon, that people experience you as like the dew of Hermon, what happens? What happened in that situation? The man said, my hands are tied. I cannot say no any further. I cannot be adamant because of the kind of word this man will speak to me. Even before he even started speaking, I can't say no to him. So when you come into a situation, what happens as a child of God? What experience have you had? It is not just the natural gift. We are talking about beyond natural gift. We are talking about the supernatural that comes with connecting with Jesus. Remember the storm in the Bible that when Jesus stepped into that situation, the storm ceased. Not because the storm wasn't raging, what didn't have the power to rage, but because the voice of Jesus could stop the storm. Jesus was the mist, the soft mist in that hard situation. What are you in a situation? What do people experience when you come around? Is it that when you come around, they like, look the other way. Oh, he's there, she's there. Oh, I don't want to deal with her. We're not talking about, you know, being an introverted. It's not, you know, we're not talking about an introvert now. We're not talking about natural, you know, there are people who are naturally, you know, where this, you know, disposed and then calm and soft-spoken. No, we're talking about the supernatural encounter that that you have. We're talking about the supernatural thing that comes, that change that comes with relating with Jesus. When we turn our life over to Jesus, Jesus brings that calmness into us. Just as that storm obeyed his voice that day. That's what we're talking about. I want us to look at um, I want us to look at uh, um,
Let us look at a situation where. Oh, what, what, what do I even have here? Uh, want us to look at Romans chapter 12, verse 3. It says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Praise God. Sometimes the problem we have is because we think so much of ourselves. We don't even imagine that we can be humble. We're not talking about your eloquence. We're not talking about how mighty or anything. We're talking about being able to do a unity simply means knowing that some people are also as important as you are. I am important. I'm not going to be thinking less of myself. I don't encourage anybody to think less of themselves. But when you begin to think, you know, the such people are called hubris, you know, hubris, someone that thinks so much of himself or herself. When you do that, it doesn't matter how quiet you are. When you're already haunted, you know, you have a haunting disposition, it makes it difficult for people to live in unity with you. We're, talking, we're not talking about absence of chaos because when the dew comes, that mist, that soft mist, it comes in the midst of heat. It comes in the midst of summer. So you coming in as that dew of Hermon around you, you're supposed to come and make a difference. Not that that heat will not be there. Being in unity with people does not mean that, it, oh, there is no... Uh, there is no uh, chaos. It is what you do when the chaos comes. Let's see verse um, 8 or so of uh, Romans chapter 12. Is it verse 8 or something? Though? Romans uh, 12. I think it's verse 8. That says, um, says, you know, be at peace with all men. And try to be at peace with all men. Something about that. Romans 8, uh, 12, 8. It says, or he that exhorted on, on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Yes, these are some of the ingredients that can make us be like the Jew of Hermon. Whatever we do, we do it all simplicity to humility. Being able to live pleasantly and you know have goodness with people does not mean that there will be no moment of Showing your chagrin, but simply it shows that you you are you have to be patient with people because people will try your patience. People will try your patience, no doubt. Your patience will be highly tried. People will try it. It's not that everybody will just agree with you. It simply also means that you know if you have to be at you know if there have to be peace, it also means that you have to be tolerant because there are people who really push you. It, there, there, there has to be calmness in the midst of chaos because the two come. Remember, it is in the summer heat that this dew of Hermon descends. So we know that it, we have to be calm. It calls for selflessness. It calls for, you know, humility, not being haunted like the passage you read. It also calls for, you know, like... The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7, say, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Sometimes we are too wise. You know something? Too much of anything is bad. So whether you want to think highly of yourself, or you want to be wise, we're not asking anybody to be foolish. But if it becomes necessary, the Bible so you also become foolish because of the word. But if you have to be wise, let your wisdom be limited to the fact that people also have their own wisdom. They also have the right to their own wisdom. Not thinking of, you said, Proverbs 37 says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. So when we are too wise, even for the, for the word of God, it becomes a problem. Then we lose the sense of being the dew of Hermon. Remember, the dew of Hermon comes to do what? To calm the heat. It comes, it drops in the midst of the heat. You see, the Bible compares it to that unity, that oneness of spirits working together. So rejoicing in hope, being patient in tribulation. We're expected to be patient. We don't say that things that will try our patience will not come. No, but what it comes from you? What is it that emits from you? What do you carry? Has the encounter with Jesus change something? Is there any transformation in you? Are you regenerated? By nature, the heart of man is deceitful. But when you have an encounter with Jesus, you turn it over to Jesus. When that urge to come, it comes to do you know what is contrary. The, the word of God reminds you. 
when, when we talk about being the due of Herman around you, that does not mean that you don't have anything that will try your precious. That doesn't mean that you become a zombie. No, it simply means the word of God will remind you that we can't do this. This is where you stop. You're talking about unity. You're talking about, you know, that which is good and pleasant. The Bible says it's good and pleasant. And achieving that which is good and pleasant will make a demand on you. To place a demand on your patience, on your level of tolerance. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew says something interesting there. The Matthew passage that we just know, Matthew 5, 13, say you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is there, there, thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. Hmm. But the salt of the world, what does it mean to be salt of the world? To be sincere, to be committed, to be patient, to bring out the best in all that. You know, you know, you know, salt is, is, is you know, enhances flavor. It has taste to a situation. When you come in, what do you do? What happens? What comes out of you? Do you bring more destruction or more harm? Or do people listen to you like that man? Even though the situation was so hard, Session was so happy, merely he came in because of the kind of he said, Our wood should be seasoned with salt. Because of the way he talks, because of, in fact, even before he started saying something, the man said, Oh, my hands are already tied. I can only listen to this man and then the man adamant. When you come into a situation, no matter how hard, how heated, you know, the situation, how hard it is, do people want to listen to you or do they just say, uh -uh, I can't even deal with this one? That is what grace can do for you. That's what transformation through Christ can do for you. When we, when we allow Christ to come into our lives, we become this sort that the Bible says that we are, if we were not. And we cannot afford to lose this all. It doesn't matter. Because when we lose it, then there's no more servor. And then we, are, we become worthless. We lose our value. It is not all the noise that we make. It is when we come into a situation, are we able to be like that that dew that falls upon Mount Zion, when we come in, what do we bring into that situation? Do we bring in, you know, presence of calmness? Do we bring in, there's something we call less, you know, anxious situation. When you come into a situation, what do you bring in into that place? Do you bring in more chaos? You think, oh, I am confident, I'm very eloquent, I am very tough, nobody can stop me, nobody can do this. It's not all about, you know, it's not about you. It's about being able to, Get that situation to a place where the Bible says good and pleasant to dwell in unity. The Bible is not talking about all of us going to live under the same roof in the same house. No, it's talking about being able to agree because the Bible knows that situations will come. But how do we get around it? What do we do? That, that word you're going to say, how do you say it best and to make a meaning instead of causing damage, even in anger? Even in anger, what is our anger supposed to achieve? Our anger is supposed to bring correction. Our anger is supposed to turn the situation around positively. That we should glorify God, not just to gratify our anger. So that you just want to go and say it to him or say it to her. Sometimes too, I get so enraged then like when they talk about road rage. But if we realize that the word of God is supposed to turn us out inside out, we begin to emit goodness, we begin to emit softness, we'll be like that soft mist falling upon Mount Zion. Praise the Lord. Falling coming out in summertime, in the in the heat of the moment, coming out when you know when the country when the weather, when the environment is burning with heat. Can we be that? That's what the word of God expects us to do. Look at the life, the life of Paul. Paul was after, you know, Christians chasing people about, trying to bring destruction. But when the power of God overtook him, Paul became something else in the hand of God. Even when people saw him and started running, when if the word of God has not made any change in our lives, then we are really wasting our time. What have we done? But we cannot remain the way we have been. Like I said before, it's not about being calm. It's not about having a quiet disposition. It's about letting the word of God turn you inside out. Even in that your quietness, what do you bring in? Do you make the situation more tense, more tight? Bearing grudges, you know, doing all these kind of things that brings, you know, turn the situation upside down. What do we do? The Bible says, good and pleasant. How good and pleasant it is. God wants us to live in unity with people. God wants us to have 
uh, supernatural agreement which is beyond human understanding because normally when people do something you want to do back that's normal but god wants us to be supernatural because we are we are we are alive in christ now when jesus saved us we have we begin to live a different life and the power of god gives us the grace to do that what of god enables us to do that i want us to at this time to begin to pray say god Cause me, turn me to that soft mist that comes in summer. Even when the environment is burning, let me be the dew of Hermon. When people experience me, let it be that they experience the dew of Hermon. Come on, go ahead and pray. Father, we bless your name for this world. That Lord, that people encounter, when people come around us, they will experience the dew of Hermon. It will be the dew of Hermon experience. Let us be the salt of the, of the earth like you made us to be. Let us be instruments of peace of your love, O oh God to share your love abroad in the name of Jesus. When we come in, oh God, you use us as instrument, as vessel to douse that situation, to douse that, that tension, oh God, that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus. When people hear about us, when people hear our voice, when people see us, they will, their faces will radiate, will bring sunshine to them. They will bring hope and calmness to that situation, to that chaos, oh God. We'll be less anxious in certain to people's experience in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father, for Jesus mentioned and we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Once again, this is the testimony of the Lord ministry. Amen. Remember, our heartbeat is going out there to reach out to those people, to those homeless people. You can even start in your own environment if you cannot join us. And in whatever way you think you can help us to reach out to them, whatever material things, whatever you can send, anyhow you can be part of it. Be part of what God is doing. Remember, we are supposed to be the deal of harmony. Remember that you can turn your life over to Christ and he will turn you to the dew of Hermon. Even as the storm heard his voice that day, the storm of life can begin to hear your voice when you come in with the word of God. When the word of God turns you in and out, you begin to emit goodness. You begin to emit peace. You know, your things better than chaos will emanate from you. You begin to, you know, you begin to dispel, you know, the tension when you come in, you begin to douse tension when you come in. You become a vessel of honor. You, be, you, be, you become an instrument of fostering unity, peace. It goes beyond you know, teamwork, it, it becomes the supernatural setting and supernatural plan of God for humanity. God wants us to live in unity. He knows that chaos will come. He knows that disagreements will come from wherever, but God has given us the power to be what he wants us to be, salt of the earth. My dear friend, are you willing? Are you ready? Run with it. Let us be that experience. Let us be that dear of human experience around us wherever we go. May the name of the Lord be blessed as we consider these things. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory you are now watching Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ.